From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. And what a pleasure it is for me to welcome you back to the Cannabis Podcast. Thanks for coming back. Or maybe this could be your very first visit. Well, if it is, you may have a curiosity about cannabis, which could be satisfied by my passion for cannabis and the fact that we're going to be talking about that wonderful plant for the next 30 or 40 minutes or so. Before we get too far, let me remind you this program is intended only for those 19 or older in your jurisdiction and is intended primarily for entertainment and perhaps educational purposes. You should always consume your cannabis responsibly. In episode 142, here's the plethora of things we're going to be touching on. We go to my buddy David Wiley's site, theounce.ca, for a story on It's springtime, time to start planting your cannabis, and this year there's lots more seeds available for you. And speaking of cannabis and some problems... <laughs> Israel has some concerns about some Canadian cannabis coming into their market, perhaps unintended. We're going to go to the Kenigma.com for a story on the best strains and terpenes for getting some focus into your world. And on Cultivar Corner today, we are trying some All Nations Cherry Gas, delightful flavors, delightful aromas, and an enjoyable experience as well. And one final story that I wish we didn't have to cover, and that's from mjbizdaily.com, and that's how many cannabis stores closed in Canada in 2023. Plus, there have been some moments in my life outside of the cannabis podcast, and I'm going to share some of those with you today, that and more, on episode 142 of the Cannabis Podcast. And as always, I want to thank you for being a listener. I truly appreciate the fact that you are here. I also want to thank my subscribers at buymeacoffee.com slash cannabis podcast. Jordana, Kevin, and Jordan, thank you for your support. Over on Patreon, my patrons, Roger, Tony, Gage, and Rob truly appreciate the support each and every time you give it to me. It helps me produce a better podcast. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that this episode as well. So let's get to our first story of the day. And for that, we're going to the ounce.ca, my friend David Wiley, and it's springtime, folks. Well, it's it's getting closer to spring. Okay, it's not spring yet. Maybe I jumped the gun on that. However, it's time for us to start thinking about spring, and cannabis seeds are popping up in retail stores. They're starting to pop up in stores, and that means it's a good time to start planting what you're planting outdoors. Aside from the fruits of your labor, growing your own is a rewarding experience if you enjoy caring for plants. Cannabis is a hardy plant that can grow even in challenging conditions. As the saying goes, it's not called weed for nothing. March is generally when people start popping their seeds, so now's the time to start gathering what you need. And there's a good selection of seeds this year, with different varieties available in different parts of the country. Cannabis seeds in British Columbia. In BC, there's a handful of classic cultivars available from 34th Street Seed Company, including Pink Kush, Bubba Kush, AK-47, Acapulco Gold, Super Lemon Haze. They're each about $33. Located on BC's Texanta Island, Weathered Island Craft Cannabis has a couple of multi-packs available, including their Texada Coastal Pack and their Time Warp Pack. They cost about 25 bucks. If you'd rather grow a plant for CBD instead of THC, Homegrow with Freedom has Painted Lady CBD Seeds. It's a balanced cross of ACDC and Auto 2 Franklin. There are five in the pack and they cost about 33 bucks. In Ontario, seeds are more expensive. 34th Street Seed Company has some different seeds available than in BC, including Kush Cookies and Bubba Kush, and they cost about 55 bucks. Humboldt Seed Company has a five-pack of Magic Melon Seeds available. The grower is located in Westwold in the BC interior, just west of Armstrong. And there's also a CBD option from HCBD, which has a durable, large flowering plant suited for Canadian climate called CBD Therapy Starter Seeds. Sells for about $20. They're all packs of five. In New Brunswick, 34th Street Seed Company again dominates the cannabis seed market. The Edmonton-based company has more than a dozen kinds of seeds available, including Mango CBD 1 to 1, Garlic Cookies, and Double Chocolate X. Eco New Brunswick, proudly grown, has Sunset and Maxima seeds, and they're all about $55 for five of them. Interesting to see what happens in the seed market and with it growing this year. I found it interesting last year I grew some Acapulco Gold, which was an autoflower, and I hate to admit it, but... There was a male plant that got left in, in the ground, and I ended up with some seeds. I think I've found so far now, there's probably a bunch more I can go through to find more, but so far I have about five Acapulco Gold seeds, and I'm going to try popping them, and we'll see if, if they do anything this year. Interesting to see how the year comes, and um, we may try some different fertilizer from Future Harvest, who we got introduced to last year. 
We'll see how that goes. So there you go. The cannabis seeds are popping up in stores across Canada. From the Cannabis Infused Studio in the Clouds, this is the Cannabis Podcast. And we are going to mjbizdaily.com for our next story, unfortunately, about how many cannabis stores in Canada closed in 2023. A record number of cannabis stores in Canada might have closed or changed hands in 2023, according to new data from regulators in the three largest Canadian marijuana markets. The data paints a picture of a viciously competitive retail landscape in some parts of the country, while other areas appear to remain in a steady build-out phase. MJ Biz Daily asked regulators for data about cannabis retail license cancellations and new licenses issued in Alberta, British Columbia, and Ontario, which together account for nearly 75% of regulated marijuana sales in Canada. The number of cannabis retail licenses that were cancelled or not renewed in Alberta during 2023 exceeded the number of new store licenses issued, the first time this has happened in the province since Canada legalized marijuana in 2018. In 2023, 62 cannabis store licenses were cancelled or not renewed in Alberta. Meanwhile, 48 new cannabis store licenses were issued. The previous year, Alberta regulators issued 140 new store licenses, compared with 73 licenses that were cancelled or not renewed by license holders. The data paints a rough picture of store closures. Provincial regulator Alberta Gaming, Liquor and Cannabis, the AGLC, cautions against drawing a direct line between a store cancelling a license and the store exiting the industry, citing several other possibilities, including relocation. Alberta currently has 749 cannabis providers, and the province is thought to be Canada's most mature marijuana retail market. Matt Moore chair of the Cannabis Law Group at Torkin Mains in Toronto, said it makes sense to see the number of new store licenses fall in a market such as Alberta, which already is well established. In a phone interview with MJ Biz Daily, Morer said he's curious to see when the Alberta market will settle into a natural balance between supply and demand for open stores. As long as the cancellation numbers stay high, to me, that says there's still an imbalance. At some point, you should see minimal cancellations, a few a year, And that would be for reasons specific to the stores, not the industry in general, Morris said. Until we see those numbers drop further on the cancellations, it's still a sign there's oversaturation. In Ontario, the largest cannabis market in Canada, by sales, the number of new store applications has declined every year since 2021. In 2021, just over a thousand retail store applications were issued, reflecting high entrepreneurial enthusiasm for the burgeoning industry, according to data shared with MJ Biz Daily by the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario the AGCO. The following year, the number of RSAs in Ontario dropped by more than 50% to 429 new RSAs before falling again in 2023 to 269. License cancellation numbers haven't risen as quickly. In 2028, eight RSAs were cancelled and the figure grew to 106 in 2022 and fell to 92 in 2023. The data suggests there are still more stores entering the Ontario market than there are exiting. In British Columbia, the number of new cannabis licenses approved also has been declining. The province issued 47 new store licenses last year, lower than the 2022 figure and roughly 50% less than the 98 permits issued in 2021, according to the Liquor and Cannabis Regulation Branch data. In recent years, the following number of cannabis retail licenses were cancelled or expired in British Columbia. 2021, there were 12. 2022, it was 6. And it climbed to 17 in 2023. The province had 493 stores in operation as of Friday. The Ministry of Public Safety and Solicitor General, which shared the data, said the provincial system does not directly track store closures. As in Alberta and Ontario, the data about British Columbia's expired or cancelled licenses should be viewed only as a rough gauge for store exits. Community Savings Credit Union CEO Mike Schilling told MJ Biz Daily that British Columbia is experiencing some of the same problems seen in other Canadian provinces, namely store overcrowding. I think some of this is the fact that this is a nascent industry. You saw a boom, there's a lot of hype, and then there's going to be a correction, Schilling told MJ Biz Daily. He believes regulated stores still experience tough competition from the illicit market. The other part of it is particular to cannabis. When you've got a retail industry that is competing against a well-established legacy industry, and the federal legislation is not supporting retailers enough to outperform legacy stores and online stores, Schilling said. We passed the legislation, but what we would like to see is the political will to finish the job, he said, of handling the illicit market. We've got unfinished business when we talk about First Nations sovereignty in the retail cannabis market. We want to support that. The spokesperson for the Ministry of Public Safety said license dormancy was not included in the analysis, even though it occasionally results in a store permanently closing. The scramble to open a cannabis store in any location where an entrepreneur could secure a lease is passed, experts say, as license holders have become wise to other factors. 
Not only are people looking at whether competition exists, but what kind of competition is there, said Raymer, the retail expert. I think there is a refound focus on regional success. Regional success looks like being efficient with your resources and understanding where your store placement is. Rather than owning two stores located hundreds of miles apart, she said entrepreneurs are looking to boost efficiency by choosing locations that mean stores can share resources. Raymer said having one location is a difficult path to go down because owning multiple stores potentially offers scale and gives a competitive advantage. It's very difficult to have a low-volume store and hire the best leadership, whereas if you have a couple of stores, you can be efficient and they can cover multiple locations. Because of that, there's a renewed focus on getting a certain number of stores in a portfolio to get scale. And I think as we are in the sixth year of legalization, we're going to see more of these adjustments of the retail store market. It's an actual factor of what's going to occur, and I'm afraid I have no prediction of what you're going to see in the future. I think the industry and the supply and demand should work itself out. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Cultivar Corner, Cultivar Corner, oh yeah. Cultivar Corner, please explain this stuff to me. On Cultivar Corner today, we are taking our first look at some All Nations Cannabis. This is Cherry Gas Indica that I have in my hands, and let's crack the jar and see what kind of aromas are awaiting us here. Oh, I get the Cherry Gas. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that is very, very fragrant. Mm, and and uh, Cherry. Like normally when stuff has, has fruits associated to it, I don't pick up the fruit that's often notified or noticed. What are my terpenes in here? Limonene, myrcene, and there it is, farnesine. It's becoming my new favorite. And total terpenes on this, 2.4%, which is amazing when you consider the aroma that pops out of that jar. <laughs> you heard that crack. It was sealed very nicely. So let me take one of those buds out. And let's take a gander at All Nations Cherry Gas before we I'll give you a description about what All Nations is all about as we head down that path as well. But right now, I got my jeweler's loop out. Take my first look at this All Nations Cherry Gas. Now, it is pretty firm. I'm not getting a lot of pushback on that, but I'm sure that'll change when I start to break up the bud. But one thing they talked about is a uh, dense trichome-covered buds. I got my jeweler's loop out here. And there is definitely some dense covered buds there. Oh, very nice. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Just, just delightful. So the flower is a light green. There's lots of red pistils. And I'm not just subtle touches of purple as I look at a couple of those buds. And I spin them around. There's a few notes of some purple there. Very nicely manicured. I'm going to break this one up, and I'm expecting to get... Oh, <laughs> I'm just amazed at the cherry flavor and the cherry aroma. It's astounding me. I <laughs> I don't usually pick up those notes, and I'm definitely picking this one up. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about All Nations Cannabis. Stolo-grown craft cannabis. Led by an indigenous collective on Stolo traditional territory in British Columbia, Canada, All Nations weaves traditional indigenous values with industry-leading cultivation methods to craft the highest quality of cannabis. And what we are looking at here is cherry gas, a cross of triple OG, cherry frosting, and gelato. This indica-leaning strain offers a unique aroma of ripe berries, stone fruit, and diesel. And yeah, the gas notes are definitely coming through. Uh, th this, this one has been named correctly. Cherry gas, a uh, dense trichome-covered buds with a deep green hue accentuated with subtle touches of purple. And I have validated those subtle touches of purple as we looked at those buds. Very impressed so far with the first jar appeal as we crack that open. I picked up a three and a half gram to give cherry gas a try. From all nations and what did i tell you the thc no i didn't 26.3 is the thc on this terpenes at 2.4 percent 
and I did cover off what the terpenes were. Now, interesting fact, and this is something I'm going to start paying attention to. Maybe this is why. Packaged, uh, I'm recording this uh, around the 1st of February, and this was packaged on, oh, that's nice, on the 6th of January. Very nice. So fairly fresh. I've noticed of late that there's a little weed hanging around out there that was from August of 2023, which is perhaps not the freshest. <laughs> not the case here. This literally from less than a month ago, which is really good when you're getting your cannabis. I always like that. Cherry gas from all nations. And I was right. When I start breaking these buds up, there's much more aroma that comes bursting forth. And it becomes a little bit squishy. As we've talked about before, everybody likes sticky weed. <laughs> oh no, I just dropped a bud. Sorry, this is a cannabis emergency. <laughs> And I need my flashlight to work in order to find it. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Cannabis emergency has been resolved. <laughs> but as I was saying, we all like sticky weed. We all like to take that bud and just feel that, oh, and there it is. So I break it up. And as I break up those smaller pieces, they definitely got a lot of stick to them. Nice, sticky sticky dank weed <laughs> there's nothing better is there and we are about to sample another delicious weed from british columbia this one from indigenous land in british columbia the stolo nation cherry gas from all nations at 26.3 percent tac definitely the berry notes there's those cherry i'm really surprised that just jumps right out at me so does the gas. The diesel notes are just, whoa. <laughs> if you like diesel in your weed, you're going to like cherry gas. And here we go. Here is All Nations Cherry Gas. Oh, and my Air Max just came up to temperature. Oh, that's nice and smooth. Even in the joint, I'm getting a, a bit of that berry note. Definitely the diesel. Especially on the exhales where I'm picking up the diesel notes. Hmm. Really nice. I'm liking the feel of that. Let's have a taste of cherry gas in the vaporizer. Hmm. If I was amazed by the aroma of the cherry when I crack that jar, I'm even more amazed by the taste of the cherry when I take a hit out of the Air Max vaporizer. Oh, that is really nice. I had a discussion with someone today but when you're using a uh, dry herb vaporizer, you have to take a different approach. It's a slower, it's a slower build to the high that you're looking for. But I still enjoy it. <laughs> and of course, when I add the joint on the other side of it, I'm I'm kind of doing double duty here. And the big question, of course, is always, what is the effect on Gary's endocannabinoid system? With this particular weed, this is classified as an indica dominant hybrid. And I'm at the time of the day where that indica dominant is going to be really nice. And I'm suspecting it's going to be that. With myrcene being the second in my list of terpenes. Again, I got limonene, myrcene, and farnesine. Farnesine for those, those cherry notes. Mm. Okay. That even tastes good in the joint. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, and here come some happy eyes. <laughs> I think that's my favorite part of smoking weed, is when you're when you're going, you're you're looking for a certain feel, and you suddenly get that first bit of. Ah, there it is. Take a pause while the furnace goes. Sometimes having a studio right next to where the furnace in your home is is a little annoying. 
But I have to say, in this case, it actually might have been good timing. <laughs> because you may remember, the furnace came on just after I had taken a few hits. Well, that furnace ran for about five minutes. <laughs> and in that ensuing five minutes, I continued to consume because I take my job seriously. And, and if my job is to provide you a review of cannabis, I'm going to do it my best job that I possibly can. So I've continued to imbibe. And more importantly, the cherry gas from all nations has continued to work its way through my endocannabinoid system. And I'm quite enjoying the journey. Started off with some really nice happy eyes. They're still there. The happy eyes is kind of the start of my euphoria. And then that euphoria just carried on, still there, quite frankly. I'm, I'm still enjoying that. But definitely indica dominant now. It's moving into a nice body stone. Had a couple of really nice body rushes down my back. <sighs> that relaxation that comes along with the traditional indica couch. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. I'm not ready to sleep just yet. But I'm really liking the body high. And I'm really glad to have some a really nice body stone going on right now. And my head's clear. I I perhaps don't want to take on a real challenging project right now, but I, I'm not stupefied, as I know some people get with some heavy indicas. I'm enjoying this. All Nations Cherry Gas, as soon as I pop that jar, mm, the aroma of that cherry and the and the sourness of the gas, oh, just, just smacks you in the face. Tastes really good when you're smoking it. Tastes really good in the Ariser Air Max Vaporizer. I am a fan of cherry gas from all nations. Mm, I'm hoping they're going to continue to grow cannabis. Sharing stories about good weed while trying good weed. This is the Cannabis Podcast. And as I've talked about before, the Cannabis Podcast does not exist in a vacuum. <laughs> there is a world outside of this particular show in which I live, evolve, and occasionally I share some of those life moments with you, and this is one such occasion. You heard about my brother Bill passing just before Christmas and shared that with a special episode of the podcast. I've also had some other personal health issues that have cropped up. I hate to say that I received that C word from my doctor a few weeks ago, now in therapy for that. All of those events and, and the things that have happened to me over the past year from a medical perspective, it seems it's been never ending. It's made me rethink things and I'm making some changes. And one of those changes is I'm going to be spending more time focused on the cannabis podcast because I'm retiring from my retail job. I think just a few days after this episode airs, uh, I will be leaving Spirit Leaf Kelowna. Uh, had a blast there. Really enjoyed working with Tark. Tark Shabib, the owner of the store, really enjoyed helping him establish the store with a really good foundation. But it's time for me to move on. It's time for me to begin the next chapter of my life, spend more time doing voice work, and spend more time dedicated to this, the Cannabis Podcast. And that's why it's in moments like this that I truly appreciate the people who are helping me do this. The ones that I have already talked about who are supporting me through buymeacoffee.com slash cannabis podcast, Jordana, Kevin, and Jordan. If you feel so inclined and you like what you hear, you too can go there and buy me a doobie if you feel so, if you feel like it. And then there's Patreon. My patrons at Patreon, I truly appreciate Tony, Roger, Gage, and Rob. And if you want to try that out, you can go to patreon.com and I've got the link on the show page right at the top right. As I try now to spend more time dedicated to building this podcast and helping you and helping all of us learn more and more about this wonderful plant we call cannabis, your support is definitely appreciated. I have worked private industry my entire life, and therefore my retirement package is, shall we say, scant. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how this works, but I'm going to give it my best shot, and we'll see where we go from there. And once again, I thank you so much for any bit of support you provide. If that is just listening to the podcast, that's just fine with me. And another story from MJ Biz Daily today about Israel launching an anti-dump probe into Canadian cannabis companies. 
The Commissioner of Israel's Trade Levies Unit opened an anti-dumping investigation in mid-January concerning the importation of medical marijuana from Canada after finding a causal link between the imports and damage to Israel's local cannabis industry. Any move to restrict imports could have a major impact on Canada's fragile cannabis export sector, as Israel currently accounts for more than one-third of all cannabis exports from Canada by weight. In fiscal year 23, Israel imported roughly 21,000 kilograms of cannabis from Canada for commercial and scientific use. In a letter to Michael Mancini, Chief Commercial Counselor for the Embassy of Canada in Israel, Danny Tal, Director of Import Administration at Israel's Ministry of Economy and Industry, wrote, I wish to inform you that after I found that special circumstances exist, I have decided to initiate an anti-dumping investigation concerning the importation of medical cannabis from Canada. Our findings regarding whether there is dumping, consequent in injury and the duty required, will be determined on the basis of best information available. It is therefore important that every interested party will submit information, evidence, their arguments, and an answered questionnaire. In a statement to MJBiz Daily, Global Affairs Canada, which manages the nation's diplomatic ties, said it was disappointed in Israel's move. We were disappointed with Israel's decision to initiate an anti-dumping investigation on imports of medical cannabis from Canada. Agency spokesperson Jean-Pierre Glodwell said in a statement, We are as well reviewing the details of Israel's decision and will engage with implicated Canadian exporters. The investigation was launched after Israeli companies reportedly suffered financial losses because of competition with cheap Canadian imports, according to Israeli Cannabis Magazine, which first reported the investigation. As part of the investigation, 10 Canadian companies have 30 days to submit information, evidence, and their arguments and answer a lengthy questionnaire. The Canadian licensed producers named in the investigation are Oxley Cannabis Group, Toronto, Canopy Growth Corporation, Smith Falls, Ontario, Kronos Group, Toronto, Decibel Cannabis, Calgary, Alberta, Organigram Holdings, Toronto, SNDL, Calgary, Alberta, Tilray Canada and its subsidiary, Hexocorp, which have headquarters in Ontario and Quebec, respectively, and Village Farms International in Delta, British Columbia. The documents announcing the investigation also named the Green Organic Dutchman, a Mississauga-based company that rebranded to Bazam one year ago. MJ Bizdata reached out to a number of the licensed producers named in the investigation, but only Tilray responded with a statement by acknowledging that the company received the notice of inquiry. To date, Tilroy Brands has only shipped into Israel from its Portugal facility, the spokesperson said. However, we firmly believe that Tilray Brands has complied with all applicable laws for prior sales into Israel. Israel joins companies from Australia, Colombia, and Jamaica that have cried foul over Canada's import-export situation. Colombia and Jamaica previously have accused Canada of protecting its domestic cannabis producers by blocking commercial imports of medical marijuana. The trade issue has drawn attention because there are a small number of meaningful legal import markets for medical cannabis, and Canada, the largest federally regulated medical market in the world, doesn't allow commercial imports. In 2020, Jamaica's former Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries told MJ Biz Daily that it appears manifestly clear that the refusal of the Canadian government to allow the importation of commercial quantities of marijuana from Jamaica is putting the investment of several Canadian investors in Jamaica at risk. Health Canada, the federal regulator for medical cannabis importing and exporting, said in a statement, Consistent with Canada's international obligations, Health Canada maintains control over the international movement of cannabis for medical and scientific purposes, strictly limiting international trade for these purposes and authorizing permits and exemptions on a case-by-case basis. Exports and imports for any other purposes is prohibited under Canadian law. A Health Canada spokesperson told MJ Biz Daily by email that Canadian companies operating in international markets where the use of cannabis for medical purposes is legal operate under Canada's system of regulated production of cannabis, which is recognized internationally. Consistent with international drug conventions, importing or exporting cannabis for medical or scientific purposes requires a permit from Health Canada for each shipment. And that update from MJBizDaily.com. And for our last story today, we're going to the Kenigma.com, and we're touching on what are the best strains for focus, the best strains in terpenes. It's 3 p.m., the last stretch of the workday, and your mind is jumping around. You know if you could just focus, you would knock out your last few tasks and be done, but your mind just won't cooperate. Should you reach for a joint or a tincture? As with all things in cannabis, it depends. There is certainly some evidence that cannabis may be helpful with increasing focus in the right dose with the right terpenes and cannabinoids. Cannabis may also be able to help you reach a flow state where ideas and focus are effortless. The little research that exists today isn't cut and dry, but it does identify several factors that influence whether cannabis can help you focus. 
The best weed strains to help you focus have a balance of CBD and THC, are energizing and stress-relieving, and have a terpene profile that includes pinene, linalool, or beta-caryophylline. Strain names are an unreliable method of finding cannabis that works for you, but for simplicity's sake, these are the strains mentioned in the article. Harlequin, ACDC, and Canatonic. Being able to focus well is essential for any adult. Without focus, nothing gets done, from work tasks to loading the dishwasher. Being able to focus and complete tasks is important for your mental health, emotional satisfaction with yourself, and even your quality of life. Can cannabis really help you focus? After all, stoners aren't exactly known for their lengthy attention span. The short answer is maybe. It depends on several factors, including the cannabinoids and terpenes in your weed, as well as how much you consume. Some scientists believe cannabis can help some people get into the zone, but can make others too relaxed to focus well. It starts with the right cannabinoids. You don't necessarily want a strain that is entirely CBD or THC, but ideally a combination of the two. THC can have different effects on cognition in different people, but most cannabis consumers know the feeling of getting so high that you end up falling asleep or spacing out, the opposite of what you're trying to achieve when you want to focus. On the other hand, it's hard to feel a dose of CBD in the same way, and many people are looking for the recognizable effect of THC. You also need to find the right dose. CBD and THC both have biphasic effects, which means how they affect you in low doses is the opposite of how they can affect you in high doses. The frontal lobe of your brain is responsible for focusing your attention. On days when your attention is scattered, it can feel like your frontal lobe is working against you, bouncing you from idea to idea without rest, but this isn't the only area of the brain affected by cannabis consumption. A 2002 study found that cannabis increased blood flow to the frontal lobe of the brain. Researchers also found that cannabis consumption did not significantly alter mean behavioral performance on the attention task, meaning cannabis consumption is not inherently distracting. Cannabis also increases blood flow to the cingulate cortex, a part of your limbic system in the area of the brain responsible for behavior regulation. If you've ever consumed cannabis before a boring task like washing dishes or folding laundry, you've experienced the benefits of this. Your frontal lobe and limbic system are crucial in idea formation along with the temporal lobe. Increasing blood flow to these areas can help spark an idea or several that you're able to dive into and focus on entirely. Stress can impact your ability to focus. It causes a rise in the levels of cortisol, a hormone produced in your adrenal glands, which is crucial in regulating your body's stress response. But increased cortisol levels can make it challenging to focus. CBD can reduce cortisol levels in the brain. The reticular activating system, RAS, is a small part of the brain that helps you focus by processing information and stimuli at lightning speed. The RAS is a sensitive piece of equipment. When it's under or overstimulated, focusing can be difficult. Increased stress will increase cortisol levels, which can quickly overstimulate the RAS, making it nearly impossible to concentrate. Most cannabis products are advertised by the sativa or indica classification model, but this actually is not the best way to pick your strain. Indica and sativa are plant classifications telling you more about the shape of the leaves and the height of the plant than the chemical makeup of its flowers. Strain names aren't much help either since there are no standard regulations as to what constitutes a certain strain. A best indicator of the right cannabis strain for you is by chemotype. Type 1, high THC, low CBD. Type 2, balanced THC and CBD. Type 3, high CBD, low THC. Type 2 is usually the best type of cannabis to increase focus and potentially reach a flow state because of the presence of CBD. It balances the heightening effects of THC. Type 2 strains can be challenging to find, so if you can't find them, you can blend in some CBD flour with your Type 1 products. Type 1 cannabis products are the most popular on the legal market, but they shouldn't be your first choice for focus and reaching a flow state. It's easy to overdo the amount of THC needed to help you focus, and instead get so high that you'll fall asleep or get completely distracted. TAC can also increase anxiety in some people, which is the opposite of helping you focus. The best terpenes for focus? Pinene. A 2005 study of terpenes found that pinene acts as an inhibitor to an enzyme that breaks down the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which may help to enhance energizing and focus effects. A 2018 study tested the effects of alpha and beta pinene on men and women by measuring their brain waves with an EEG test. They found that men and women both responded to alpha pinene with increased brain activity. However, women reacted more strongly than men to beta-pinene. Linalool Rodent studies have shown linalool has a positive effect on brain activity in the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus and can improve cognitive behaviors, potentially increasing focus. 
Beta-caryophylline has dose-dependent anti-anxiety and antidepressant effects, combating stress in the brain. It also acts as a central nervous system depressant, which can slow down brain activity and keep you from feeling scatterbrained. A 2020 human trial found that inhaled eucalyptol increases blood flow throughout the brain and stimulates the frontal cortex, an area of the brain responsible for focus. The best strains to improve creativity have a balance of CBD and THC with a terpene profile that includes pinene, linalool, and beta-caryophylline. A few strains with this profile include harlequin, ACDC, and canatonic. These are just a few examples and don't necessarily reflect the chemical makeup of the strains bearing these names near you. Instead of looking for these exact varieties, ask to see the certificate of analysis when possible to get a clear idea of the chemical makeup of your product. If you don't have access to lab reports, smell the weed before you buy it. And as a bit of a sidebar to that, wouldn't that be nice in Canada if you could smell your weed before you buy it? <laughs> but there you go, a, a little bit of a summary on some of the best strains for you to be able to focus. From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. And let me finish once again with my thanks for you being here, for your support, for being a listener. I truly do appreciate it. And we're going to end with a joke, as we like to do. And this one today is from ToughMama.com. What's the difference between a drunk and a stoner? The drunk will run a stop sign. The stoner will wait for it to turn green. And that's it for episode 142 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio. High above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. Season 1 of Dope History is now available at dopehistory.com. Dope History weaves you through the lives of those who have been touched by cannabis or have had an influence on the events that shaped our laws or relationships with this plant. You'll hear tales from Frenchie Cannoli, Keith Strop, Eddie Lepp, Tom Alexander, Ed Rosenthal, Wolf Seagull, Jorge Cervantes, and Tommy Chong. Available now at dopehistory.com.